I, I have a lot of excuses. I have a broken arm. A lot of things. So if I fuck up, you fuck up. Besides that, punk rock. So there's no fucking up. <laughs> 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 Is that correct? Okay, yeah. So. Don't think I'm gonna be taking my shirt off and showing you any of my breasticles or anything. <laughs> Those are dangerous, and you can put somebody's eye out. Yeah. Oh, those fucking movies, huh? Yeah. Stop yeah. looking at my breasticles. <laughs> Same thing. Elbow, breasticle. You gotta tap those meaning to a breasticle. How about those movies? Yeah. yeah. Thank God for bandmates. You know, if you feel like you suck, you should just get a band, and then they will make you look really good. Because <laughs> they're probably brilliant, and I love my bandmates, and I miss Leslie. It's fucking, I can watch that movie a million times, and I love that movie that you just made, so that's not really good. And thank you, Curran, for having this. So, uh, how many of you were here to see my one freak show ever? Woo! Oh, shit, okay, I forget. Ah. So then you know that people are always asking me if I'm a man or a woman, right? Yeah. Yeah. And now I always say, <clears throat> what are you asking me for? Do I look like I know? <laughs> Except if it's a cop. And I don't say that. So this one night, it's like all dark and shit, and there's a cop rolling up. And I know that he's looking at me, and he's going to ask that, or he's thinking, he's assuming that I'm a dude, which is good. I mean, he's on the right track, right? But then he's going to look at my license, and there's going to be an M, not an M. There's, he's going to expect to see an M, but there's really going to be an F, and then he's going to get confused. <laughs> you really don't want to get cops confused, because then he get pissed, right? And then, it, then you could get hurt because, yeah, so. But no, they actually nobody likes to be confused, right? Because it's troubling. Am I right? Yes. And that's why I'm always in trouble. Okay, <laughs> confusing. I mean, if you can't trust me to put the right letter in the right box, how are you going to trust me not to be a maniac? Lotion <laughs> <laughs> in the basket. Ooh. <laughs> When my M doesn't match my F. I think to people, what it means is you're a fake, a fraud, and a felon. That's what that F on my license means. Because you're a fuck up. You're an outlaw, and you're scary. You don't fit in the binary, and you ain't never gonna get that tech job downtown, so fuck it. That's cool. I just make shit up to do. Like one time I started this bike messenger company. It's an all-girl bike messenger company. Called Lickety Split. <laughs> well, it means fast every time we... <laughs> but yeah, like I just want to hang out with my peeps, maybe make a couple bucks, you know, so I just mix it up and then, you know, we got this band together. A bunch of half-naked dykes running around playing chainsaws and waving rubber dicks. Try to and you know, sometimes you get like paid a couple bucks, sometimes you just get a sandwich, sometimes you just get laid, it's all good. <laughs> Barter system. <laughs> but, but, you know, and I just like to hang out with my peeps in my hood, and we do not, when we get in trouble, we don't call the cops, right? Because when you call the cops, Two things happen. One is they, they don't show up, and then we just solve the shit ourselves. <laughs> or they do show up at my door, take one look at me, decide I'm guilty, and then I go to jail. So I don't know. That's right. Call the cops. I call my people, so I call my posse. And, uh, and usually, somebody's there to grab my hand whenever I'm sliding off the edges of reality. Which is a lot. <laughs> And sliding off the edges of society often just because I'll be like holding hands with the wrong person or I'm hanging out with the brown people and then that pisses off the haters and then I gotta hurt somebody and then the cops are after me and everybody's trying to kill me and that's stressful. <laughs> so then I gotta eat some trees or smoke some trees and drink some beer and eat some lids and then I'm asleep in a corner with a fucking sign on my back that says free shit. <laughs> And you know, you can't take care of yourself when you're asleep. So then I gotta wakey wakey eggs and bakey. Or better yet, math. 
<laughs> Blow crack, I'm awake. I don't do that shit anymore. I'm a change man. But anyway, this cop. You can still smell that bad boy era, aura, from the era of the aura. That's not very fucked out. I can tell he's done some shit, so I'm gonna check this shit out. So he, he, uh, he rolls up and he, he looks at the sign on the side of my car, which he's now going to read to me out loud as if I have not put this sign on the side of my car. And he's off. Homobiles. <laughs> Moe's getting hoes where they need to go. <laughs> what is that? Come on, well, it's right services like a volunteer situation and it's for the LGBT, LMOP, QRST, um, community. <laughs> It's like donation, you don't have to get money, and it's like, it's to get like the drag queens and the, the trans ladies and the beds and short skirts and long hair, the gay male homosexuals, you know, home safe and, you know, kick your ride and shit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> got three drag queens standing on the corner crying. Oh. And he's all, well, who wouldn't want that? He drives away. Wait, what? When did cops get all this sensitivity training, eh? <laughs> B, when did I get so healthy? I'm like, because he kind of looked like he was relieved that I was picking up his slack. I was like, wait a minute. Does that mean that we're on the same team? Does that mean I'm the man? No, I'm Peter Pan, an eternally small boy. I was played by a face With a posse of fairies, pirates, and babes. We're all driving everybody around, everybody wants to drive, and all of a sudden it's like, it's this, uh, oh, like, well, it's kind of always been that way. Like, when I was in high school, I would, like, drive all my pals over to the city because we lived in the burbs, and all my pals were these, like, Mexican bags and Latino gay male homosexuals, excuse me. But that's how we identified back in the day. We didn't have a fancy terminology. And, uh, and my best friend, Victor, his name is Victor, that's what his mom called him. Hey, Victor, Lynn's here. And then he would say, hey, where can you get your dad's keys? I'm like, yeah. So, because back in the day, designated driver did not mean that you weren't drunk. All it meant was that your dad had a car. <laughs> so I would drive him to the bar, and he'd be like, "Everything I had." I'd drive him home, drunk with one eye closed. See, but now things are different because actually, I'm gonna have both eyes open and be sober. And also now. I want to have, I just quit all those things. Like, I used to have to drink to get friends, and then I had um, so many drinks, and I didn't have any more friends, so I stopped. <laughs> no, but I still have to have adventures and jobs and shit. So, I'm like, where am I? I don't even fucking know. Oh, yeah, babes. Oh, yeah. So, anyway, <laughs> got a lot of notes, I don't know. Anyway, so. Uh, there we are. We, just, we decided to start this homobiles thing, right? Which is, uh, it's healthy. And, uh, and so on, we're doing Lincoln Split, and then we're doing Tribe 8, and we're doing all the things, and then I've got this touring life, and then my mom has a stroke. Boom. I and mean, then actually, we're right here. It was about five and a half years ago. It was at Kuntz's house. And I get the call from Berlin. She had a stroke, and uh, that changed everything. I mean, she just slid right off the edges of reality and into a wheelchair. And she has some serious brain damage. She went from being like this hard-edged Berliner folk queen into being like a, just mad. She was mad and she was upset and she couldn't move and she was just punching nurses and they were like, what's wrong with your mom? Why she had a stroke? And I'm like, okay, but your mom's out of control. Like, oh yeah, runs in the family. Got a problem with that? <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, so uh, so I was I tried to cheer her up, I tried to take care of her, and I realized that I wasn't gonna be able to do that. I knew though what I had to do. I had to get some smiles out there in the world from you guys. 
and I'd be able to bring us home to my mom. And then you got a parent, and then they have a car, and then you got some peeps, and you put them all together, and then you can fix some shit, right? So I knew some babes that worked in some strip joints, and, uh, and then they went to some bachelor parties, and they, they, did, they did that kind of, <clears throat> etc. And so I knew that I could go pick those babes up, and I could help them get to the thing. And I was standing around with a baseball bat, getting hands off the ladies. And uh, you know, and we would call it ho-mobiles. <laughs> get it? And all of a sudden, it's like this 24-hour mobile chosen family reunion thing. You got butches and badasses and feathers and waves. You know, cabbies, at the end of the night, they will find like a, a wallet with like a credit card and a bundle of coke and a cell phone in the back of the cab. But not me, I will find like some feathers <laughs> and like a fake fingernail. And one night I was <laughs> dropping off uh, this drag queen, Kelly Stowe. It's totally like scared rag with the like zombie contact lenses and like who's sitting in the car for hours at the end of the night and they're like, you know, what if you did this? And like, I could do that. I'm gonna go to LA, I'm gonna ride my bike all over. And, and then he gets out of the car and he goes to get in his house and he's like, wait, is that wait? Stop. And then I roll down the window and he's like, uh yeah, can you look at my seat next to you? Yeah, do you get, is there a big tit there? <laughs> <laughs> that was great about homobile. <laughs> always exciting. <laughs> Everybody has a story about how we get left in the dust by cats. You know, if you're bagging and you're holding hands with your boyfriend, meow, they go right by and pick up a straight cup down the street. Or Sister Pat and Leather, she's one of the sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. And she was like, <laughs> she was like, they were always asking her, like, what's under the dress? She's like, I'll tell you what's under the dress, honey. There's a man under this dress. And I will jump out and punch you and pull this high heel off and put it in your eye. So, <laughs> you don't want that, right? So you call home deal. And then there was this, <laughs> there's this one bed, she got roofied and left in the swamp for dead. And she woke up in the morning and she like crawled out. She just knocked on the fucking nearest door that she could get to. And they looked at her and I said, well, we got to call you an ambulance. Cop, cab, something. She's like, kind of hard enough tonight. And they're all homobile? <laughs> She's still a regular. <laughs> then, and, then, and then people started calling it like nicknames like Bad Cab or they call it a portal. I was like, why do you come on in a portal? Oh, because transportation. It's <laughs> like a door in another world. And I was like, hey, hosted by Vivian and Furthermore, Ryan Moore, suppository spelling. And we got so popular that sometimes you would have to wait and wait and wait. And people would, they would wait. There's a car to be whizzing by cabs and lifts and Ubers. Oh, you can get a free ride from Lyft. Sad kid. <laughs> but, you know, you might just want to wait until Homobiles comes to your town. <laughs> but, uh, so people would wait a long time. And so I'm pull, I pull up to pick up this one trans lady that's actually been waiting a really long time in front of this bar called Esta Noche. Oh. Wham! I know, no longer here. Why? Because gentrification. So I want you to huh. spare time, put that on your list of things to do to fix, okay? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Too late for Estanoche, but I'm sure you could save something. Uh, <laughs> anyway, she's, she's guessing the car and she's really grateful and she's happy to see me and she's like, you know, I, I just want to thank you for everything that you're doing. And I was like, I'm just trying to have fun, really, just hang out with my peeps. And she's like, no, really, because, like, so many of us were, were getting hurt. And I was like, yeah, you know, it's trying about that. I didn't really think we were making much of that, but I hope so. That's cool. And she's like, you know, I really want you to call up this organization uh, called Ella para Trans Latina. And it's, uh, it's for trans Latina ladies. And, um, you know, I tell them how you can help and see if you can, you know, get them to start using you. And I'm like, cool. So I call up. And the lady there, she's really bad. She's like, oh, yeah, come on now. I can make this meeting happen. And I'm totally going to, you know, a lot of the ladies there, like, you know, it's not their first language, so, you know, I'll translate. And I'm like, this is going to be so fun, you know. She's going to translate for the trans ladies. It's going to be good. It's like, get there. And um, as you're up there, let them laugh and sing and having a good time. Because I walk in, and they look a little apprehensive, you know, like, and, um, 
Hey, uh... Yeah. Maybe I walk over. Oh, I look at them and I'm like, you know, English isn't their first language. They look like they probably don't have a lot of money. Maybe they don't have a job so they can get surgery, so they can get more jobs, so they can get more money. And uh, I'm thinking maybe they sometimes feel like they're sitting in a corner with a sign on their back that says free stuff. You know, just disempowered. And then I walk over, and I look at this beautiful altar they've got on the wall. they got like these fairy lights, Christmas lights, and they've got the little virgin Guadalupe candles all over the place. And they've got about 30 pictures up on the wall. It's beautiful lit up. And my eye is drawn right to the most recognizable, the most famous trans woman of all, Gwen Araujo. Mm. And she's the most famous for a really tragic reason, right? Because her M, her F, didn't match the M in the minds of her killers. So they got confused. So they got mad. So that justified them, in their minds, to take her life. And I looked at all the rest of the pictures on the wall and I realized all the other pictures are of women who met the same end. And none of them had any family or posse or protection. And I think about Gwen's family and how they stood up for her after she died. And they corrected the news media whenever they wanted to call Gwen a man. They were like, actually, we don't care how you want to interpret her body. She was a woman. And they, they made sure that they changed all pronouns all the time. And then they made sure that her killers went to jail. And then they went to the judge and they made sure that he changed her gender legally, posthumously. Like, that never happened before. And that gave us hope. I look at the rest of the ladies on the wall and I'm like, oh, man, yeah, that. And I think to myself, like, what are you going to do, widow? Well? <laughs> so I look at my sisters and I'm like, uh, you know what? You know, I have to use any English, just text your pickup address, your drop off address, your name will come and get you. And so whenever I'm sliding off the edges of, reality or society or whatever ground I think I'm standing on. I just grab the hand of somebody else who's sliding too. And then we can fly. And then we'll keep the streets safe for America. <laughs>